Now, if you've never seen Rebels or it's been a while and you need a recap, you've come to the right place. I'm going to give you everything you need to know to prepare for the Ahsoka series. Obviously, be prepared for some spoilers ahead. Also, some of the events and characters I'm going to cover in this video, I've made more in-depth videos about. So if you stay tuned to the end, I'll give you a playlist of a few videos that dig deeper into some of these things I cover here. Okay, let's start where we are at in the timeline. The start of the Rebel story takes place around four years before the events of Episode 4, A New Hope, and the destruction of the first Death star over the planet Yavin. Officially, it's the year 4 BBY or four years before the Battle of Yavin. At this point, the rebellion is still in its infancy with just a few small pockets of resistance. One of those pockets is an outer rim planet on Lothal. It's here that we're introduced to our colorful band of rebels known as the Spectres. They're also known as the Ghost Crew, which is named after their ship, the Ghost. Now, the leader of the Spectres is a Twi'lek named Hera Syndulla from the planet Ryloth. Her father, Father Cham Syndulla is a fierce warrior and rebel leader who actually almost killed Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine about eight years earlier. Needless to say, Hera has been fighting wars since she was a small child. Her counterpart, her partner in love interest, is Kanan Jarrus. Now, Kanan's actual real name is Caleb Dune, and he was a Jedi Padawan under the Jedi Master Depa Balaba when Order 66 was carried out. She was killed by her clones right in front of Caleb, but he was able to escape. He then went into hiding and later changed his name to Kanan Jarrus. Next, we have Sabine Wren, a colorful Mandalorian warrior and, as we can see from her armor, an artist. She's from Clan Wren, which is a vassal of House Vizsla. We'll get more into Sabine's backstory and family later in the video. Next, Gerazeb Aurelios, or just Zeb for short. He's a Lasat warrior from the planet Lasan. His whole planet was all but destroyed by the Empire and is one of the few surviving Lasat left. Finally, we have Chopper, a C1 astromech droid. He was serving the Republic during the Clone Wars when his ship was shot down during the Ryloth campaign. He was pulled from the wreckage by Hera and restored. They've been pretty much inseparable ever since. The Spectres were on a mission on Lothal to steal some weapons from the Empire, then sell them later for food and fuel. It's on this mission that their plan is hijacked by a local kid named Ezra Bridger. Quickly, Kanan senses that he has some force ability and eventually they bring him into the Spectre group. Now, both the Spectres and Ezra are a bit reluctant to trust each other at first, but they do slowly build the bond and begin to see that they can do a lot of good together. Kanan even starts to train Ezra as an apprentice. Now they carry out several missions for a mysterious cloaked figure with a code name Fulcrum. During one mission in particular, one that involves rescuing some Wookiee slaves, Kanan reveals himself to be a Jedi to the Empire. Now this gains the attention of somebody called the Grand Inquisitor. The Inquisitors were a small group of Force sensitives formed by the Emperor Palpatine to hunt down any remaining Jedi that survived Order 6. Kanan and Ezra escape the Grand Inquisitor several times as he tracks them as they carry out all of these missions. Another Imperial, ISB agent Alexander Callus, is hunting them down on Lothal as well. Both Agent Callus and the Grand Inquisitor are unable to quash this rebellion nuisance on Lothal, so Grand Moff Tarkin shows up in his Star Destroyer to take over. They capture Kanan and bring him aboard Tarkin's Star Destroyer. Here, the Spectres disable Tarkin's ship and rescue Kanan, but not before one last fight with the Grand Inquisitor. Kanan is able to defeat him, exploiting the biggest flaw of these terribly designed lightsabers carried by the Inquisitors. Now, it's time to rendezvous with Senator Bail Organa, who's leading a larger rebel group known as Phoenix Squadron. If you're subscribed to this channel, you are also part of Phoenix Squadron, so welcome rebels. Here we also learn the secret identity of Fulcrum. It's none other than Ahsoka Tano. After Ahsoka escapes Order 66, she goes into hiding under the name Ashla. She hides for about a year before she re-emerges after a quick fight with the Inquisitor where she decides to stop hiding and join the fight against the Empire. At this time, Bail Organa has a somewhat loose spy network that he was trying to manage when Ahsoka offered to spearhead this project under the name Fulcrum. She was the first agent of the program and she 
she was essentially the handler of the ghost crew. Once she revealed herself as fulcrum to the crew, she became a little more hands-on and even helped them on some missions and started to even help Kanan teach Ezra the ways of the Force. We also discover here that our good friend Captain Rex is still alive. If you haven't seen the Clone Wars, Captain Rex is a main character in the series. He is side by side with both Anakin and Ahsoka throughout all of the battles. Anakin and Rex were close, like brothers. And during Order 66, Rex fought off the programming of his inhibitor chip just enough so that Ahsoka could escape. She was actually able to save Rex's life in return by removing his inhibitor chip, which in turn he saves Ahsoka from the other clones. They escape together and go into hiding. And I have a feeling we're going to see Rex in the Ahsoka series. Kanan doesn't trust Rex at first, seeing as Rex is a clone, and it was the clones that turned on the Jedi and killed his master, Depa Bulaba. But after some time and a few missions, Kanan starts to trust Rex and they even become friends. Enter Darth Vader. Now Ahsoka at this point doesn't know that Anakin is Vader. She senses something when they face the Sith Lord during a dogfight, but she doesn't know quite what she's feeling at the time. Ezra and Kanan face him once and barely escape with their lives. She goes on a mission with the two Jedi back to Lothal where they found the location of an ancient Jedi temple. We see this temple earlier in season one where Ezra finds the kyber crystal for his lightsaber. And back at that time Yoda came to them through the force. So they were hoping to find him again, looking for guidance and answers on how to defeat the Sith. Inside the temple, Ezra finds Yoda through the Force who tells him that the answers he seeks are on a Sith planet called Malachor. Kanan finds out the true identity of the Grand Inquisitor that he killed back on Tarkin's ship. He was a Jedi Temple guard during the Clone Wars. And Ahsoka, well, Ahsoka sees a vision of Anakin. A heartbreaking vision. She is dealing with so much guilt. You abandoned me. You failed me. Do you know what I've become? Now I think we see more of this in the Ahsoka series. Ahsoka still carries guilt of leaving Anakin. She now knows that Anakin becomes Vader. She needs to find peace with that before she can move on, and we're going to get to my theory on that later. A couple of Inquisitors show up as they escape once again, which is an ongoing theme. The Inquisitors show up and the Jedi get away. Now the Inquisitors weren't a huge threat for the most part. They were great at tracking Jedi, but they weren't very powerful in the Force. Not to mention the absolutely terrible design of their lightsabers. Ahsoka fought two of them and pretty much wiped the floor with them without much effort. Now the two Jedi, along with Ahsoka, arrive on Malachor where they find an ancient Sith temple. The Inquisitors show up again and Ezra is separated from Ahsoka and Kanan. As he makes his way back, he finds the former Sith Lord Maul, who is also on the planet searching for something he has been obsessed with for years. So Maul convinces the other three that the secret they're looking for is a holocron on the top of the Sith temple. So they make their way to the top, fighting the Inquisitors as they ascend. Maul sees Ezra as a potential apprentice. So as they get separated, he turns on Kanan and he blinds him with a quick fight. Kanan reaches down deep with the force throwing Maul off the temple. Now at the top, as Ezra finds the holocron, Vader shows up in epic fashion on top of his X-1 advanced TIE fighter. Vader tries to take the holocron from Ezra, and just before Vader lands the killing strike of his lightsaber, Ahsoka calls out to Vader. Now this scene is so heavy. The fight is epic. Anakin and his former Padawan, his little sister, his friend. Now Vader, a Sith Lord, and Ahsoka, who carries so much guilt for leaving Anakin during the Clone Wars, sees finally what Anakin has become. Not this time. Then you will die. Ahsoka! Oh! Oh! 
We see at the end, Ahsoka and Vader both barely escape with their lives. We catch a glimpse of Ahsoka heading down into some temple ruins, and as far as the Rebels' timeline goes, this is the last we see of Ahsoka. We will talk about exactly how she survived in a minute and add some context to this scene and some extremely important events that happen in the last season of Rebels. Now, it's going to be important for the Ahsoka series. So let's now get into about three years before the events of A New Hope. Kanan, now completely blind, starts to struggle with his role with Ezra and the Ghost Crew. He spends a lot of time alone. Ezra has taken on a more leadership role in the missions they carry out, but he also grows more angry and resentful towards Kanan. We start to see him touch aspects of the dark side. They eventually reconcile and get back on track. They rescue Wedge Antilles from the Sky Strike Academy and bring him into the Rebellion, in which we all know he flies later on alongside Luke in the famous trench run to destroy the first Death Star. But all these rebel shenanigans really start to be taken seriously by the Empire, so they bring in someone to deal with them. Here we get our very first glimpse of Grand Admiral Thrawn. Now Lothal is extremely important to Thrawn. He opens up a factory to build a new type of TIE fighter that would probably destroy just about any starfighter in the entire galaxy. They were faster, more heavily armed, and capable of hyperspace travel. Unfortunately, he was competing with director Orson Krennic for funding for his TIE fighter defender program. See, Orson Krennic was in charge of a program called Stardust, which we know now as the secret code for the Death Star construction. Now Thrawn loses out on the funding after the Rebels steal the TIE Defender prototype and eventually blow up the factory, and we'll get to that in a second. During the same time, Sabine, Ezra, and Kanan go to Dathomir, Maul's home planet, and they find the Darksaber in Maul's lair. Now, I cover this in another video in depth, but Sabine reluctantly trains with the Darksaber for a while under the guidance of Ezra and Kanan. She becomes pretty proficient, and so her lightsaber skills, combined with her Mandalorian weapons designed to fight Jedi, will definitely come in handy in the Ahsoka series when we see her in the trailers fighting Shin Hati. Meanwhile, Ezra is lured to Tatooine by Maul, who is obsessed with finding Kenobi. That was his whole purpose for being in that Sith temple on Malachor. He's been looking for Kenobi since his encounter with Kenobi back on Tatooine during The Phantom Menace. Now, Ezra finds Kenobi first, or should I say, Obi-Wan finds Ezra nearly dead in the desert. Maul follows close behind. Right then, Ezra is sent back home while Obi-Wan and Maul have their final and quite poetic duel. Back at their rebel base, Thrawn has tracked them, and the rebels are barely escaped a bombardment from the Imperials. Now, this brings us to the final season. This starts us off around a year before we meet Luke Skywalker in A New Hope, about one BBY. Now the Spectres return to Mandalore to help rescue Sabine's father, who's been held captive by the Empire. Now, Sabine had been cast out by her family back when she joined the newly formed Empire. We learn here that they cast her out, but the reason why is pretty crazy. So she helped the Empire design a weapon called the Arc Pulse Generator. This weapon could target Mandalorian Beskar armor and completely disintegrate she was young and naive and wasn't aware that that's what, what they were going to use it for. But the Mandalorians hated her for it. But by this time, when they go to rescue Sabine's father, she had reconciled with her family. They had forgiven her. But with her now wielding the Darksaber, rescuing her father, and freeing her family from being under the thumb of the Empire, she was able to gain the trust and forgiveness of not only her family, Clan Wren, but other Mandalorians as well. This includes Bo-Katan and the Night Owls. Agent Callus, the ISB agent under Thrawn, also defects from the Imperials thanks to Zeb and joins the Phoenix Squadron. He becomes the second Fulcrum agent after Ahsoka Tano. The third agent is actually Cassian Andor. Now, the Ghost crew return to Lothal where they once again battle Thrawn. Hera is part of an X-Wing squadron attacking the blockade Thrawn has set up on Lothal. Her X-Wing is shot down and she's captured by Thrawn's assassin Rook and taken into custody. Custody. Kanan plans a rescue, and here we're introduced to the Loth Wolves. Now, throughout the series, we've seen these little cute Loth cats, and we see one with Sabine in the Ahsoka trailer, as well as painted on her helmet. But these Loth Wolves are special. They can communicate through the Force. They're semi-sentient and have a strong connection to the Force. They keep appearing to Kanan, which is going to become important soon. Kanan starts to understand that he's going to have to do something in order to save Hera. The Wolves continue to appear to him and communicate with him through the the force. Sabine, 
Kanan and Ezra set off to rescue Hera and the timing is perfect. Thrawn has to leave for Coruscant to meet with the Emperor about getting the funding to his TIE Defender program. Kanan finds Hera as she's being tortured, he frees her and then they escape to the top of the Lothal fuel depot. Sabine and Ezra find a transport to get back to their base. The Imperials send some Adat walkers to the fuel depot. As Sabine and Ezra make their way to the fuel depot to pick up Kanan and Hera, the walkers are getting closer and closer. Hera tells Kanan something she's been wanting to say for a long time. Just as they're picked up, the walkers do the unthinkable. They fire on the fuel cell that Kanan and Hera are standing on. There's no time. Kanan runs over and uses the force to stop the spread of the explosion just long enough to save his friends and the love of his life. It's an absolutely heartbreaking scene. Kanan giving the ultimate sacrifice to save the ones he loves. Of course, this absolutely devastates the ghost crew and Hera more than anyone. Unfortunately, there's no time for mourning. Thrawn is returning to finish off the rebels on Lothal. As they scramble to escape and deal with the loss of Kanan, they run once again into the Loth Wolves. This time, the Loth Wolves carry the crew through a portal and onto the other side of the planet. Almost instantly, this portal is a special place. This place can only be accessed through the force and the Loth Wolves possess the ability to travel into and through it. Now at the same time, the Empire found the Jedi Temple on Lothal where below it, a painting served as a puzzle, a gateway to this special place, but they're unable to solve this puzzle or figure out how to enter. Now Ezra here is given the key to this portal by the Loth Wolves and he's able to get into this mystical world. Now the official name of this world is a place called the World Between Worlds. This World Between Worlds is a realm that connects all of time and space. Now this is going to be important in the Ahsoka series, but this place has doorways that tie together time and space. Here, Ezra makes his way around to different doors, seeing things from both the past, the present, and the future. Above one portal in particular, he sees the Morai. This is the bird that has close ties with Ahsoka, something I go over in my big Ahsoka video. He looks through the portal that the Morai is sitting above, and he sees Ahsoka fighting Vader back on Malachor during season two. Now, just as Vader is going to strike her down, Ezra reflexively reaches in, grabs Ahsoka, and pulls her into safety as the temple collapses. Ezra realizes that if he could save Ahsoka, that he could even save Kanan, who sacrificed his life to save Ezra, Hera, and Sabine. Now Ahsoka warns him though that trying to go back and change the past would be catastrophic. Kanan sacrificed himself to save the others, so going back and trying to save Kanan in the world between worlds would cause the rest of the Spectres to die in his place. So here the Emperor finds them and they have to escape. Ezra runs and escapes back into the Lothal portal while Ahsoka escapes back through the door to Malachor. Ezra seals the door to the world between worlds and collapses the temple. Next, the rebels capture Governor Price, who's a real piece of work, and they take the Imperial Dome. Just then, Thrawn and the Seventh Fleet shows up. Thrawn's bodyguard and assassin, the Nogri named Rook, disarms Lothal's shield generator as Thrawn starts to bombard the city. Ezra surrenders and agrees to board Thrawn's destroyer, the Chimera. The deal was that if Ezra surrenders, Thrawn would stop bombarding the city. So just before he leaves, he gives his lightsaber to Chopper, which is why we see Sabine in the Ahsoka trailer has Ezra's lightsaber. Now, the one thing I haven't mentioned is Ezra's ability to understand and communicate with animals, but there's one animal in particular that Ezra has a strong bond with. It's an animal called the Pergil. They're essentially space whales. He helps them out on a previous mission, and his plan involves them to finally escape Thrawn. As he boards Thrawn's ship, the Pergil enter Lothal and pull the Chimera, the Seventh Fleet, Thrawn and Ezra into unknown space. Whatever happens next happens to both of us. When they glow like that, they're about to jump into hyperspace. Get out of there! I can't do that. The Force will be with you. Always. Now we see the Pergil in the Ahsoka trailer, so they're gonna play a part in Ahsoka and Sabine's search for Ezra in the Ahsoka series. Now this victory on Lothal 
is the beginning of the end for the Empire. This happens right before the events of Rogue One and then of course A New Hope. We see Chopper briefly in Rogue One as Captain Syndulla's name is called over the intercom at the Rebel base. Now let's talk about the epilogue and the end of the Rebel series. It starts with Sabine watching Lothal when some X-Wings fly over along with Ahsoka's T6 Jedi shuttle. Now this seems to be a bit of a time jump. She talks about the Emperor's reign coming to an end, also how Hera and Rex fought in the Battle of Endor, and how she was joined by a newcomer, Jason Syndulla, the son of Kanan and Hera. It ends with Ahsoka and Sabine going off to search for Ezra. So now, what can we expect coming up? Well, I think we'll probably get an explanation on where Ahsoka was during the events of the original trilogy, so between 0 and about 4 AB wire after the Battle of Yavin. Hera is a general in the New Republic, Mon Mothma is elected Chancellor, and we actually saw Zeb in Season 3 of The Mandalorian at a fighter pilot bar. We see Ahsoka find an entrance to the world between worlds, so that will definitely have some significance in the show. She still carries the guilt of Anakin turning to the dark side and we know by this time Luke and Ahsoka have met. We saw them in the book of Boba Fett while Luke was training Grogu. So hopefully we can see them meet for the first time and honestly I would love to see them talk about Anakin. Really I could watch an entire episode of just them sitting down and talking about what happened to Anakin. Now Thrawn is also returning. We have some new dark Jedi and the search for Ezra continues. Now I've gone more into depth about some of the events and characters that I've touched on here. So if you want to see more click on this playlist here. Thank you guys so much for watching and may the force be with you.